Hi, Keith Van Wimmer here, Van Tech Consulting. Uh, we had a subscriber that uh, watched our cleaning a uh, cleaver and asked if we could go through how to clean the actual splicer. So this is, uh, you know, so first thing that we want to do is make sure that um, when we're looking at this is make sure that you're always consulting your uh, user guide. So sometimes they come with a CD, you know, et cetera. Um, hard copy, but always make sure that you look at the manufacturer user guide under the maintenance section and make sure that what you're doing is acceptable for their uh, for their machines. Uh, Fujikura may have a different practice than Inno. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go through some general um, maintenance tips here. And so the first thing um, is you never want to use any kind of uh, acetone, thinner, benzol, um, anything like that to clean any part of the splicer. Um, obviously, if you use acetone and you have some rubber plastic parts on the splicer, it can melt that, uh, not to mention it will strip the paint off or the coatings, etc. So you never want to use any compressed gas, canned air, anything that you get at, you know, staples or, uh, or you know, office supply places. Um, again, the, these can have um, oils or flammable materials in them. Uh, carriers, etc., and you start squirting that around there, and then all of a sudden you hit that with an arc, you know, you may end up lighting your splicer on fire. So that would be a bad thing. Um, whenever we're talking about, you know, I haven't done any maintenance on this for a while, and you can see there's some dust on it, um, you know, just use a, a microfiber cloth or whatever to, to clean this off. You might want to throw one of these in your, uh, in your splicer box. If you have to get some of the dirt off there if it's been down in the trenches with you. You know, just use some uh, clean water, moisten it, you know, dampen up a microfiber and then wipe it down with that. Uh, again, don't, uh, don't be squirting water on it or Windex or anything like that. Don't use any kind of chemical solvents or, you know, things like that. You know, take this handle off. Again, microfiber cloth, we can use that to, uh, to dry it, you know, just to dry microfiber cloth. There we go. And uh, you can use that to, to dry off the moisture. No furniture polish. You know, people like to put pledge and stuff on here. Windex, you know, just, just don't do it. I mean, it's, it's, if you have a spot on here and you're trying to get it off, you know, again, just a damp cloth will do. Uh, keep it away from any, obviously, moisture away from any electrical connections, etc. Some of the um, cleaning materials that we're going to use, microfiber cloths, one damp, one dry. This is just a, uh, this is a, a watch cleaning blower. It's by Bergeron. I like to use these instead of the, uh, the compressed air. They give you a nice little puff. You can also use um, one of my uh, other favorites is the, uh, it's a rocket puffer. It's for photography and it has a nozzle on it. But again, that, you know, clean out any, uh, any dust or anything in, in little crevices. It works pretty well. Little fine point tweezers. You know, this can, if you have any cotton fibers, you can get those off. Be careful with these. What you don't want to do is, and we'll cover this some more, is you don't want to be scraping in here and poking at stuff and lenses. So those are kind of a, uh, a secondary thing. Some cotton swabs, uh, lint-free wipes. These are two different types of swabs. These are uh, little sponges, lint-free. You can use these for cleaning the mirrors in there. Um, if you'll notice, one of these is kind of round and puffy. Um, and again, that's for cleaning mirrors and things. This other guy is kind of uh, flattened out, looks a little bit like a fish here, and that's a V-Groove cleaner. You know, these guys are a little bit pricey when you buy them. Um, you know, if you're not paying for them, great. If you are, you know, again, cotton swabs work fine. Just, uh, we'll go through that. So the first thing we want to do is clean V-Grooves. V-Grooves are these little guys right here, okay? You have a couple little V-grooves here, depending on whether you're using universal chucks, which these guys are, universal clamps, or if you're using um, the carriers. So we have V-grooves that need to be cleaned. You have them inside of the fusion splicer. Um, just a note on that, don't use anything like a sharp point or anything to, to gouge at those. You want to make sure that you're being careful. We also have carriers. So some splicers use these uh, 
people call them chucks, things like that. They're, they're just a fiber carrier. These replace the universal clamps. So if you were going to use the, uh, the carriers or the chucks, all you need to do on this machine here is just uh, remove the universal clamp. Just wiggle that guy out. There we go. And then these guys here, as you put your fiber, you'd place your, you know, open it up. Um, they're magnetic. You'd put your fiber in here, close that, and then this would go um, in here and align it uh, for you. So remember that when you're working with these, that these also have a V-groove in them. And depending on, this is a uh, 900, so this is uh, designed for use with the tight buffer, right? So, um, but you want to make sure that that is cleaned out, especially when you're using the 250s, which is the bare fiber, because again, if you have dirt or something in there, um, it'll kick the fiber up and then it won't seat properly in the V-groove and then you end up with a misalignment or a bad splice. So these are these are okay, uh, not my favorite. They're, they're a little bit slower than using the uh, universals and once you get used to the universals, you know, they're, they're much faster and, and way easier to use. Um, so the universal clamps are good for 250, 900 and up to three mil. So two and a half, three mil for patch cables. V-groups, um, no hard objects, no nothing to, to scrape those out or clean those. Um, you just want to use the Q-tips, okay? Fiber holders, make sure these are clean. So again, um, this is, this is cleaning V-grooves is daily maintenance. So anytime that you're going to start doing your, uh, doing your splicing, you want to take your machine out and just do a really quick uh, cleanup. And then there's, there's uh, ongoing and um, advanced maintenance, we'll call it. Let's go ahead and we'll go through and, and just clean the V-groove. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna puff this off and we're gonna get all the dust and, and loose particles off there that we can, okay? There's inside your um, cleaver you should have a little fiber brush and that little fiber brush uh, this little guy here uh, you can also use him to clean out some of the some of the grooves and, and things like that so we have a little bit of uh, particulate matter right here so we'll blow that off all right cool that's that the uh, next step on this will be to use a cotton swab so 99% alcohol is all you're going to use Again, I'll just do a couple over the machine, of course, right? A couple drops on there. I'll just take and, and kind of squish it out on there just to, just to not oversaturate. Okay, so clean that, clean the upper, clean the upper here. Getting a little bit of dirt off there. Clean this, right? Clean your V grooves. Okay, and uh, that's basically at that point, you've cleaned all of your um, your track here. So let's make sure that we get the oven. There's little pads here that hold this down. Okay, and that's that. All right. Um, keep in mind, let the alcohol dry off, and uh, you know, don't turn on your oven. Obviously, it's hot. And so that's your general cleaning here. There is on these machines. There's cameras. Okay, and so we'll talk about cleaning those in a second. You can clean the electrodes. If you take the electrode out, and when we do this to, uh, to do the cameras in here, there's a couple cameras, there's one on each side of this. And those are your alignments. So when you take this electrode out, you can actually take it out to, to, uh, to clean it and get the carbon off there. And there's a couple different ways of doing that. When you do this, when you take the, the electrodes out, and clean those, you do have to go back through um, the arc stabilization on this and, and run it through the process. Um, we'll take them out today and, and do that. Um, I'm not going to do the arc stabilization, but uh, we'll save that for another video. So let's go ahead and uh, you know, clean down the, the outside of this. Now again, don't over, um, don't get your your uh, wipe too too wet. Just give it a nice wipe down. Should have probably done this in the first part. Um, 
and just give it a dry. So the, you know, we want to make sure these are, like I've said before in other videos, these are precision machines and so the, the better you take care of them, the more accurately they're going to splice. Okay, so when we do this, I'm going to go ahead and pull the electrodes and there's a couple different ways. So um, some machines have, um, you know, Phillips screws that you have to take out. This one is a, uh, is just a little thumb screw here. So you take out your electrode. And we'll take out this other guy. Big hands right in the way. Okay. Underneath there, get a nice clean um, alcohol, uh, cotton swab for alcohol. So down in here, there's a lens here, a camera and a camera lens here. Very important to make sure that um, when you clean these that you follow your manufacturer recommendations. Um, some of them allow or will um, tell you to use 99% alcohol. Um, some say don't use alcohol at all. On the Innos, um, it's, it's acceptable. The manufacturer says that you can use alcohol in the lenses. Um, you just want to be careful make sure there's not a coating on there. So ring it and then just take and go down in here and clean that lens and clean that guy and then flip it over to the dry and just wipe him off and wipe that off okay the lint free wipes this is for cleaning off your electrodes now there is um, some manufacturers don't want you to clean the electrodes um, you know they, they uh, I believe Fujikura says don't don't remove them don't clean them you know, just leave them alone. Inno, on the other hand, has an actual grinder that you can uh, that you can get. It comes with the kit, and you can literally put it in there and re um, just like doing TIG welding. You can reform the the tip and get all the carbon off there and, and make it pristine. You're gonna clean this. So just put a couple drops of um, alcohol on the lint free, and just take that and. Kind of wipe that guy off. Not too bad. You can see a little discoloration there. So we got a little bit of uh, dirt off of it. All right, once you've done that one, take this and put it back in. Don't, uh, don't touch the electrode at all with your fingers. Once you've cleaned it, always use it by the handle. Okay, throw that back in there. Don't throw, set. It back in there and then tighten this down into uh, tighten the clamp back down. Now, obviously, it's uh, you don't need to torque it down to 50 pounds at all. So, if you can't get that out, um, you know, just take a little screwdriver or a little uh, your tweezers there and let's get ourselves a little clean part here. We'll do the other side. Um, one of the things that you can also do is um, if you have a, uh, you kind of remember your school days and had the big pink uh, pencil eraser, a little dirt off that, you can actually take that and, uh, you know, if you had something like this, a pencil eraser, you can actually dig this into the eraser and, and twist it. And again, that kind of, uh, the eraser is just, just abrasive enough to burnish the, uh, the carbon off of this. And... Uh, get you all set up. I just touched that so I'm going to clean that off again. All right. Okay, and then again just pop that back in there gently. Tighten it down. Okay, that's pretty much it. We'll call this one done. And then um, I'll go ahead and do another video on the um, short video on the arc stabilization since uh, a continuation to this. So anyway, I mean, it's fairly simple to clean these machines. Uh, again, can't stress enough. This is general cleaning. Make sure that you follow the manufacturer's specifications for cleaning your specific machine, whether you're using a Sumitomo, uh, you know, Fujikura, Ilzentech, Inno, you know, follow the manufacturer recommendations. All right. 
I uh, hope this helps. I hope uh, you enjoyed it. If you have any other questions about this, feel free to give me a call or drop us a comment or email. You know, don't forget to subscribe, like. Um, appreciate all the new subscribers. And uh, that's it. We'll see you on the next video. Take care. Thank you.